Hi, I'm Susan Timmons, Upper School Instructional Librarian at Harpeth Hall. Today I'm going to demonstrate ProQuest's eBook Central, and I'm going to show you how to log in, search their collection of 14,000 eBooks, view your results, save, and cite your sources. You can get to the database by going to ebookcentral.proquest.com slash lib slash Harpeth Hall. You can also always go to Bear Clicks and just click on Harpeth Hall LibGuides. You can either type in the name of your project LibGuide, such as Ancient History, or you can just click on the A to Z databa database list. Since you know the name of the database is ProQuest eBook Central, if I click on P and I navigate down, I can find the database link right there. Now notice it's going to let me into the database immediately without asking for a password or username. That's because it authenticates with Google and I'm already logged into my Gmail, so it automatically recognizes me as an authorized user. If you get prompted for a password, it's usually because you're not logged into Google yet and you just have to enter your Gmail address and your Gmail password and it should let you right in. The search uh, box is very intuitive, so you can just enter your keywords, you get back the results from their collection of 14,000 ebooks, and it's got your search terms highlighted in the results. You have the option to show a results by chapter, but one thing I like about the book results is when you click into the book, you can see a lot of the information like the publisher year, the name of the editor, things like that. But you can also click right here, the read online button. So you're not sure yet whether or not you wanna use this source, you just wanna check it out quickly. Click the read online button. And what's nice about this is it has a table of contents over here on the left, and it actually will show you with this bar how many times your search term has appeared in that chapter. So I can quickly see, okay, here's the introduction by the editor, Linda Komaroff, but this chapter down here looks like it has a lot of hits. So again, when I click on there, it even goes to the specific page and tells me how many times my search term has appeared on that page. So I can very quickly navigate around this book and see which section is most helpful. And so once I've found something that I think will be really helpful, I wanna make sure I don't lose it. I wanna be sure to hold on to it. So there's a lot of different options for saving your search results. There is a bookshelf feature right here, the little book with the plus. And again, because you're automatically logged in with your Google address, you can save a book and then it's going to come right here to your bookshelf and you can always find it again later. If you're working in a group and you just wanna let your group members know about a great book that you found, click on this link button. Don't grab the link up here out of the URL box, but click on the link button and you can share this link with your group. You can also just download the chapter. Let's say you know it's gonna be great and you wanna print it or read it later. You've got the option to print, but you've also got the option to just download it to a PDF. Um, and it'll look exactly like this. You'll be able to save it right to your laptop. So now that I've found something that I really like, I've saved it, I'm ready to cite it. So if you need to cite it, something to keep in mind is whether you're citing the whole book that has a single author or whether each chapter of the book has a different author. And here you can clearly see that each chapter in this book is an essay by a different author. In this case, it's Noriyuki Shiriashi is this um, chapter author. Whereas we found out earlier that um, someone named Linda Komaroff is the editor of the book. The reason I point that out is this does have a citation box and so you can click on it. It doesn't work with Noodle Tools, but um, I just wanted to warn you that this citation is not correct. So it's already got the editor's name in the wrong place. It's not displaying in the front of the citation as it should, but it's also not citing the chapter author even though you're clearly in this specific chapter. And so for that and other reasons, I wanna make, be, make sure that you know how to do this citation yourself manually. But again, when in doubt, you can always use this citation button to just confirm what is the name of the book, what is the name of the editor, what is the name of the publisher, the database, again, ProQuest eBook Central, and the URL right here, again, not from your URL uh, bar, but from this link. So all the things that you need to do your Noodle Tool citation are there except for your chapter author and your chapter title and your page numbers, which you're gonna to have to get from the source itself. 
So just remember when you are in Noodle Tools, you are using a database. So when you click on a new source, you're going to have to start with a database. And then remember, because they're eBooks, these things were all originally books. So then you're going to select book. So you can use the drop down from your library's databases. And if you start to type in ProQuest, you'll see right here that ProQuest eBook Central is an option. And if I click on it, it's just going to feed it into this mandatory field right here for the name of the database. I can paste my URL. And again, I've got the book information there in their citation box. Remember the name of the editor, right, was Linda. But the tricky thing about Noodle Tools, this chapter or section um, area is always minimized. And you have to remember to click this down arrow and open this. And this is where you would put in the name of your actual chapter author. And then you would paste in the actual chapter title right here. So just keep that in mind about doing a Noodle Tools citation. It's a little more complicated. Try not to copy and paste. But if you follow these steps, you should be in good shape. Thanks.